Welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to have a little talk with everybody out there on the interwebs. This channel that you tuned into is called Pokemon Speed. Now, I know there hasn't been a lot of speed on this channel, but it's coming. It's coming. But what you have seen me do on this channel, I've gone to swap meets. I've done some repairs. Hopefully you save some money with some of the tips and tricks I've had for you guys. I've gone to car shows and I've worked on some of my stuff, some of my projects that I got going on back here. The reason why I go to a lot of swap meets and a lot of car shows is because if you're restoring vehicles, whatever you're doing to classic cars, whether it be, you know, a 1965, 67 Mustang like it is back here, or even a 1993 Mustang, because believe it or not, that is a classic nowadays. Or even like a Honda Civic Si, a Volkswagen Jetta from the 90s or the 2000s, a GTI, an older Mercedes from the 90s, all that stuff, all that stuff is now considered a classic car. So now, if you're new to the game, if you're new to the car enthusiast game, if uh, I guess that's a good word for it. If you made the mistake of going into debt and buying yourself a project car, or if you just like looking at cars that other people have fixed, you might want to go to a car show. You might want to go to a swap meet. You might want to go to like a car meet and check some of this stuff out. Restoring cars or working on, on cars it's a, is a lot different than when I was young. Think about it. When I was a kid, I could buy a 67 Mustang. It was only 30 years old, not 60 years old, right? So the, the car wasn't in that bad of shape. And most of the time, you could just drive to the junkyard and find a whole bunch of good parts at the junkyard for super cheap prices. So I had a Volkswagen bus back in the day. I bought it. It needed window seals, and I think it needed like a rear hatch or something. I drove to the junkyard. Guess what? There was like six or seven of them right there. I found my window seals. I found the rear, ha rear hatch. I even found this. See, I still have this from way back then. And this is an original Volkswagen VW emblem off of Volkswagen from the junkyard. If you're new to this, you have a project car, you want to buy a project car, and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on them, your best bet is going to swap meets. On this video, we're going to discuss a couple things. One, how to find them. Two, what to expect when you get to the swap meet. Three, what to bring with you to the swap meet. It's very, very important. And then at the end, is it really worth it? Do you really want to spend that much money on a project that you're never going to make that money back? It's very rare when somebody starts building something that they make their money back. Because a lot of the times, even if you get parts cheap, the labor is never included in that, right? So all the work you're going to be doing is basically free. And then when you go to sell it, yeah, you might get 20, 30 grand, 60, 70, depending on how good a build it is. But you, you never get back all the time you spent. And if you're doing everything yourself, from paint, body work, to engine, like rebuilding engines, all that. You're gonna put more time and money into that thing than it's ever gonna be worth to anybody else. But hey man, that's the car game. At least you enjoy it. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you where I go to look for all this stuff. So it's very, very easy. We just go right to the old interwebs. Right? So this website's the one that I like using to find all this stuff. You go to SoCal Car Events. Bam. Right? So once you get there, you see all these banner ads right here. So these are some of the bigger car shows and swap meets that you can hit. And they'll give you the date, a little bit of information. You can always select them. And it'll go to the bigger flyer. If you're going to show your vehicle, you can go ahead and fill all this out. And go out and show it off. On the left side of the page, well, it'll be your right. You see that number, that red number? That's the date. So... On the 14th in Burbank, there's a Valley Cruise Night at Foster Freeze, which will be tomorrow, I believe. There you go. So those are car meets. But if you scroll down, you see all the different car meets, Yucca Valley, Camarillo, all the different cities that they're in, Covina, El Segundo, Hesperia, Huntington Beach, everything. The date and the car meet, and they'll give you a flyer as to what you can expect. See, what you want to avoid is when you get to a car meet and you see a bunch of yahoos out there and beat up cars doing donuts in the parking lot because you know it's going to escalate to them going and doing donuts out on the street. You don't want, you want to avoid those. For instance, there's one that I go to a lot. It's right here. Uh, Bob's Big Boy on the 14th in Burbank. So here we go. Classic car show every Friday, 4 to 10 at Bob's Big Boy. Now this place is really cool because you see a lot of nice cars there. And every once in a while, Jay Leno even stops by. And what's cool about it is you go, you check out some cars. See, you can see it some of the, 
I have a video where I just did like a live walk around through and there'll be some really nice cars, really cool people and you can get a burger there, right? It's a Bow's Big Boy, always a good thing. So if that doesn't work for you, you can always just Google it, right? Just put car swap meat. And there you go. See, oldride.com is another listing. Swap meets, good guys, rot, uh, rotting custom. The Pomona swap meet. Which is the biggest swap meet here in our area. Same thing, you go through these websites and they'll give you information about what you can and can bring. What should you expect heading out to some of these swap meets and car meets? A lot of these people are very, very friendly. You walk up to them, you could talk to them. But one thing is, no matter where you're at, car show, swap meet, car meet, rule of thumb, don't touch the cars. Unless the person who owns the car is there, just don't touch it. Some guys are real nice. They'll let the kids be, jump in the car. Some of the lowrider guys, they let the kids jump in the car as they're hopping it. But do not touch the car. That is like a rule in any, any car show you go to. But other than that, everybody's cool, everybody's nice. You can talk to people. And what's cool about it is once you're there and you get to know people, you can ask them, hey man, you know, where's the other car show? Where's the swap meet? And that's when you start finding out the car people. The car people who have stacks of parts like, like me, all right? I just went to the swap meet, sold a whole bunch of stuff off. You'll find those people that have stuff that they want to sell for your car. If you're going to go to a car show, a lot of car shows have swap meets attached to them. But if you're going to go there, the one thing you need to bring is cash. Cash is king, baby. Cash is king. Everybody takes cash. There's a lot of vendors and a lot of sellers that will take Zelle, but everybody takes cash. Another thing, if you're out there looking for parts, what you need to do is you really need to research the part you're looking for. There's a lot of manufacturers out there making parts that will fit your vehicle, but because they can't copy every single change that cars have made. For example, this Mustang right here, it's an early build Mustang, and there's some parts that they sell out there that will not fit an early build Mustang. They will only fit a late build Mustang. Now what early build means that this thing was probably built in 66, not 67. It's a whole thing with the car, the way they build cars. And then uh, a late build Mustang would have been built in 67 through 68. So there's a lot of parts on this that are probably fit a 66 Mustang. But since you're not buying new parts, you're buying used parts at a, lot, at a lot of these swap meets. You need to research, research and make sure, you know, go to the different websites, the different people that make it. Research to see if it will or will not fit on your vehicle. I'll give you a good example. This right here on my 67 Mustang is a Borgensen pump. I bought that brand new. Fit right on, no problems. The problem was when I bought some headers. I bought a used set of headers. I paid a lot for them. They were ceramic coated. The headers had a part number. I looked up the part number. The guy who sold them to me said, yeah, they'll fit a 67. I looked up the part number. Yep, it says right there, 67 Mustang. I brought them home, put them in. Guess what? They didn't fit. I paid like 250 bucks for them. And the problem was they did fit a 67 that doesn't have this lousy pump. This is an aftermarket pump, not a factory pump. The last runner right here was hitting right on the edge of that pump. The guy didn't lie to me. They did fit a 67. They just didn't fit my 67. So you have to be aware that stuff like that will happen. They are aftermarket parts. Most of the time, if it's a factory old part, there's usually no problem. I ended up losing out on that one. But there are examples where you win big time. This suspension for this 67 Mustang is a Total Control Products upper and lower Heim joint, fancy schmancy suspension. I ended up picking that up, believe it or not, for $200, right? It didn't have the coil over, I had to order that separately, but those were only 700 bucks. But if you were to buy that straight from Total Control, that's a $2,500, $3,000 suspension. So I made out really well on that one going to the swap meets. Another thing that you need to be aware of is when you head out to the swap meet, especially a place like Pomona Swap. This Pomona Swap Meet is huge. I've done calculations with a pedometer. I've walked 11 miles at that swap meet, 11 miles on a Sunday morning. So it's a lot of walking. So you gotta be prepared for some of that stuff. You gotta be prepared when you go to some of these car shows and some of these swap meets are huge. They're outdoors, uh, you're in the hot sun most of the time. You gotta really be prepared to either bring yourself some water or be prepared to overpay for water there at the show. And sometimes food, you'll be there most of the morning. So if you're gonna be walking around for two or three hours, looking for parts, you're gonna get thirsty, bring some water with you, maybe even bring a sandwich. Now let's say you get to the swap meet, you're walking around the swap meet, and you find a part. What are you gonna do with it? 
Now, if it's a flashlight, you could probably carry it around all day. But what if you end up buying one of these? This is an AC controller for an older Ford, right? Now, do you want to carry that around all day? <laughs> Here's a few examples of some of the things I use. I usually take this thing because you can carry a lot of stuff in it. It's not too big, it's not too heavy. You can always bring something like this, drag it behind you, but your arm will get tired. Now, if you're a pro, you bring something like this, this heavy duty dolly, right? Now that thing will carry a transmission, set of wheels, no problem. So, the big question is, is all this worth it? Is it worth for you to get up at 4.30 in the morning, drive an hour, get to the swap meet as early as possible, walk 11 miles, and guess what? You find nothing. It's happened to me many times. There's other places to look for parts, eBay, Craigslist, OfferUp, and you will find some good deals on there, but most of the time you're gonna be paying a little bit of premium on eBay, especially. Let's see, I've done all of them. I've done eBay, I've done OfferUp, uh, Craigslist, and I've gone to the swap meet. I've always had better luck at the swap meet. That's why I continue to go, even if I'm walking for all, <laughs> even, if I, even if I walk 11 miles, and spend some money, you know, and buy myself a $22 burrito at Pomona and not buy anything. And I have a good time. But everybody out there on the interwebs who's looking at this video and you're new to the car enthusiast game or you want to get into it, I recommend you do it. It's a good hobby to be into. It. And you will lose money. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You will lose money. But it's a good hobby. It's good to, you know, work on your motor skills. Um... You know, building something, I don't know what it does to a person's like morale or something, but building something makes you feel good. Whether it's a house, a car, uh, you know, uh, a Millennium Falcon Lego set. All you youngsters out there that are looking to get into cars, do it, right? I know the game has changed. I know things are a lot more expensive. Like I said, I you'd be able to buy some of this stuff at the junkyard when I was younger. Can't do that nowadays. A lot of the stuff is now considered like a specialty thing, so the parts will be expensive, but you can find them at the swap meet. But you know what? If that's what you want to get into, I recommend you do. It's a good, it's, I love doing it. Right? So to answer everybody's question, is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Get yourself a project car, go to the swap meets, go to the car shows, get to know people, learn how to work on that piece of junk, and guess what? The little things that you will do to your car, your project car, will help you on your regular car. I know nowadays a lot of the stuff is very, very technical. Everything's computer controlled, but there's ways around it. There's YouTube University. Half the, half the time that when, you, when you don't know how to do something, usually you can Google it on YouTube and it'll come up. It'll at least guide you in a direction where you'll be able to fix your car. If you guys don't know, the industry needs mechanics. I've been a mechanic my whole life. I've done very well. And all you youngsters who are out there, I recommend you do it. Because right now is a time where you guys can actually make a whole lot of money because it's like, it's like, uh, it's the law of supply and demand. Right now they need mechanics. There's a demand. There's very little supply. So guess what? They're going to pay for the ones that are out there. I guarantee you that. Well, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for joining me once again. Really appreciate all the love and support. If you're liking these videos, please subscribe. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.